This has been an, uh, an, ex an extremely important year for us uh, here at Spark Therapeutics. Uh, just actually a week or so ago, we received uh, approval uh, in Europe for our drug Luxterna, which is the one you were just referencing. Yes. Um, which uh, that, that will now be carried forward by our partner outside the United States in Novartis. Uh, and we will continue to supply uh, the drug to Novartis as they bring that to the market outside the United States, the markets outside the United States. Uh, in the United States, uh, we announced earlier this year, as you said, a, a price point uh, for a one-time therapy that we believe has the potential to be uh, long-lasting, if not lifelong. So that uh, price you referenced is for uh, a single payment. Uh, we have had an incredible year of execution around that launch. This is the first gene therapy for a genetic disease ever launched in the United States. We still, as Spark, are the only company that's ever done that. Uh, and we've already shipped 42 vials. We've had a, a very strong year of execution around the launch of that therapy. Uh, and are already seeing 85% in the commercial side of the insurance business, 85% of, co of covered lives already have positive coverage for that therapy. And that's in large part not only due to the results we've seen in the, in the trials for that therapy, but also the innovative ways we've gone about uh, proposing to be paid for that therapy, which we can speak more about. Just try, for, for, for people that might not be able to connect the dots between how much it costs to, to uh, to develop a treatment like this, and maybe that they can't realize that you might use the the proceeds uh, to innovate other, you know, either life-saving or or life-altering treatments. It just sounds like a lot because it, it, without insurance or or the average person that would need this, nobody could come up with eight hundred fifty thousand dollars, or or at least a very small percentage of people would be able to afford it. So. It almost sounds like you're taking advantage of the insurance companies to, to people that don't understand the way, the, you know, the cost of developing something like this. I mean, how, would, how do you justify it? Well, what I would say is that you're bringing up the concerns uh, around access that we certainly had as we were getting closer to the approval in the United States last year. And so when we launched uh, the drug earlier this year, we not only announced uh, a price point but we announced uh, two innovative uh, payment and distribution models that went alongside that price. One of those is a way in which we can cut out a lot of the additional costs that are inherent in uh, supplying drugs um, in the United States. And the second was that we proposed to stand behind the product and provide uh, rebates back uh, if it wasn't showing initial efficacy or it wasn't showing, importantly, continued efficacy out as far as three years. And so between those proposals and the strength of the data that we've shown, uh, again, we've had uh, a, an incredibly strong year of execution around showing uh, the, the, uh, the launch of that therapy. Patients uh, are getting access. 85% of commercial insurers uh, are covering those, and a, a more than half already of government uh, payers are covering it as well. So that's a lot of progress in a very short period of time. And to your point, uh, this year has also been about the progress we are making in uh, investing in other areas and other diseases, including hemophilia. Right. We have three product candidates in hemophilia, uh, one in a study in hemophilia B that's now in a phase three program that Pfizer is running, and two others in hemophilia A, one of which we presented on uh, the data yesterday at the American Society of Hematology meeting. Um, that is moving towards a phase three trial. And then a third one that we announced last month that we intend to develop in the patient population that has inhibitors in the hemophilia A space. Can, is there room for you? I mean, uh, Biomarin, is, is, a, is it true there a little bit, uh, a few months ahead in, in terms of the, the, uh, the hemophilia A treatment? Or is there enough, for, there's room for both uh, both drugs, I guess, aren't there? It's, it's an unmet medical need. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a very large uh, market. I think it's a very attractive one for gene therapy generally, uh, because what you're talking about trying to do is to uh, provide the normal functional copy, the healthy copy of the gene, in this case, to cells in the liver and allow the liver to essentially produce the protein, in this case, factor eight, that uh, the patients are missing. So the market is certainly, we think, large enough uh, for multiple players. Uh, but importantly also, this is a market that patients are certainly not optimally served, but they have solutions today. And what we've heard from the medical community and patients uh, is that they're, they're certainly gonna look for uh, what is best in class. And so we've continued yeah. to strive 
to focus on uh, the safety of the candidates we've been developing and shared really important, uh, unique findings yesterday around some of the safety profile of our therapy, which are different from what uh, has been shown in other studies. And yep. also, look, this is about a one-time treatment, and the uh, goal yep. is to have a one-time treatment that lasts long-term, and we showed great durability data uh, yesterday with uh, persistent stable levels of factor expression. Well, it, the, you, you emphasize the one-time treatment so much that your stock symbol is O-N-C-E once. So that, that, uh, that, that's, that's right. a play on, on gene therapy in general, I guess. But it, stock was almost 100, now 42. Um, and that has to do with timing on some of these, uh, I, I think, uh, hemophilia products, does it not? Jeff, is that how you'd attribute the, the, the pullback in the shares? Or? Yeah, I, th I think that people have, uh, are looking to try to uh, determine how the hemophilia market is going to play out in many years from now. Yeah. Uh, so I certainly understand the feedback. However, what I would say is, you know, again, as I mentioned at the outset, we are still the only company that has okay. launched a gene therapy for a genetic disease in the United States. We have a product candidate moving uh, uh, into phase three, uh, towards phase three in uh, hemophilia okay. A. Uh, and we have built a set of capabilities that are still unique to the industry. We are supplying drug for Novartis and, and have a launched uh, gene therapy in the U.S. So we're very confident about what we're doing, and I think uh, our long-term prospects are, are very, continue to be very strong.